I'll ask you to do, and it'll be very conversational. Okay. And what I'd like to do is avoid yes and no answers mm -hmm. if possible. Oh, yeah. uh, of course, you know, Masons sometimes do have proclivity for verbosity. So oh, don't yeah. hesitate. Yeah, okay. Uh, because that's, that's, that's part of your charm well, that we want to... We've probably got a delete switch over there on that camera. <laughs> Just for the interviewer, not the interviewee. <laughs> there you go. Okay. What I'll ask you to do is, after I ask the question, mm -hmm. just so they can alleviate having the interviewer in, in the finished piece, mm -hmm. is to repeat the question and then answer it, so that we actually have you voicing the question and the answer okay. all together. Okay. So, Robert, what, what prompted you to become a Mason? Oh, what prompted me to become a, a Mason is pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> this may be rough, too. Uh, Actually, it was my sister. Uh, she joined the uh, International Order of uh, Rainbows. And of course, my folks, anything us kids were involved in, they had to be involved in. So, Mom joined Star and, and Dad joined the Masons. And uh, they worked with, with the Rainbow Girls. And uh, I was in the Navy then. And they came out and visited me. I was in Idaho at that time. and. Uh, Dad said, you know, you gotta, you gotta look into the Masons. Uh, probably violated some laws of Iowa jurisdiction at that time, but uh, I said, oh, okay, I'll do that. Well, the next time I went home on leave, I was being transferred to the East Coast. I had 30 days off, so I had put in a petition, and, and uh, in the 30 days I was there, I didn't have anything else to do. All my old high school buddies were working or, or had moved away, and and uh, so I, I spent probably about six hours a day, I guess, uh, with my mentor. And uh, <coughs> never forget him. He was um, he ran a dry cleaning business, and he'd bring me in there, and, and he'd be pressing shirts, steam going everywhere, hotter than. The only thing nice about it was in December. So it was a little bit cooler, but uh, man, I'm telling you, it was hot in there, and we went through the uh, the ritual, and uh, I was able to, in, in two weeks, get the first one done, and they had the two-week uh, minimum, and so then I turned around and got the second degree done, too, and so uh, finished that up, uh, went away for a year, year and a half, come back, and... Uh, uh, started to college and, and uh, about 50 miles from where I grew up and they got the lodge there to uh, give me a mentor up there and, and they got a, a, a neat old gentleman to uh, put me through and once again it was in the summertime because I was going to school in the winter and uh, hotter and everything and I, I put on my proficiency uh, one night in August, which it must have, that's where they had a lot of air conditioning back in the Midwest, and, and it was just, it was hot up there. And uh, as anybody know that's, that's done, the, done that, the proficiency, it's hot even if you're outside in a, in a snowstorm. So uh, I did that and uh, got my proficiency there uh, as a courtesy, and, and that was kind of neat. So I have to, I have to credit the, uh, uh, at least one of the youth groups was getting me in there, and it's, it's kind of a, a circle way, but uh, I think that's a lot of ways uh, things happen. At the risk of being cliche, there really was a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow, <laughs> wasn't there? Yeah, uh, I never have. Uh, I've been back there several times. I've never got to attend lodge there, but uh, <coughs> I think those guys probably back there are still scratching their heads. <laughs> Because uh, most of them knew me when I was growing up, and uh, I don't think any of us were seen as grandmasters at that point. Uh, so um, it was, yeah, it was a neat experience. You know, I learned a lot. Of <coughs> learned a lot of things through that. Uh, what the fraternity do, you do for you? Uh, and then the courtesy work where, you know, um, doesn't make any difference, you know, where you join at. Uh, 
the lodge will help you, or some lodge will help you if you need that help. Uh, and it's, um, yeah, because without that courtesy work, I could have never driven the, the 50 miles as much as I needed to to get that done on that summer. And, uh, and it's been that way ever since. No matter where you go, they're, uh, they're ready to accept you. And, uh, and then after I uh, got out as Grand Master, we did a lot of traveling for four years uh, through the Southwest. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, all you got to do is, is uh, walk into the lodge and say, I'm a brother, I want to visit. And it's just like you've been a member there all your life. So, yep. It's, uh, yeah, there is a pot of gold, that's for sure. So, guess that's about it. How'd you come by the design of your uh, of your Grand Master oh, Pen? How'd that come by the design of the Grand Master Pen? That's an easy easy one. The, the design of it is a is a, a pair of wooden shoes, and uh, of course that was from the Dutch heritage. I wanted something there, and uh, so that's that's where that came from, and. Uh, then uh, I put the theme on on that, and the theme was focus, and and that's probably the most in, in interesting part. I have a, we have a, a 34 year old son that's Down syndrome, and uh, he's always been involved in Special Olympics. And he's been involved in track and field and skiing and powerlifting, and in fact he's going to the uh, Special Olympics International Games in Athens, Greece in uh, June and July. Uh, just something that blew our mind. Uh, he got the call, uh, they got the call all here about two months ago. And uh, they're taking a hundred and some from, from Washington State. They're only taking one from Spokane and only two power lifters. Uh, a lady from the, uh, from the west side and then, uh, and then Mike. And uh, so, uh, when he was doing powerlifting, he's got a great coach, uh, Pat Gray, and uh, Pat would always make him focus because that was one of the problems Downs kids have. But once they focus in on something and get it, you know, they really do. So, so Pat always used focus, focus, and, and Mike had focus. And I got some pictures around here someplace at GDC. I mean, he he focuses more than uh, than I ever could. Well, <clears throat> our third oldest son um, was switching from skis to, to snowboard and just having a terrible time. You know, as, as most snowboarders do, the first month or so, they spend more time on their backside than they do, you know, going down the hill. And <laughs> yeah, Eric's uh, girlfriend came down just laughing to the lodge. And, and talked to Vita and said, and Vita said, what are you laughing about? I said, oh, I tell you, she said, Eric's about ready to blow. He, he's falling all the time, and Mike's skiing down with him and stopping and saying, focus, Eric, focus, you know. And every time he says that, you know, Eric just about goes out of his mind. And he said, I, she said, I had to leave her, or I laughed up there. Well, the, the whole thing made me think of what do we need to do as Masons? And we really need to think about what we want to do and where we want to go. Uh, I don't think we really sat down and focused on where where the fraternity and where this jurisdiction wants to go. And uh, and out of that, uh, although it started a couple of years before, and, and most worshipful brother Bill Wood and, and Dick McCarty here, when they developed the long range plan, and. Uh, because I'd had that out of focus, it was kind of neat that it, it, it fell upon me to be the year I implemented it. But uh, I got to implement it, but it was, it was those other guys before me, that, uh, those other grandmasters that really put it together and put it in place, and uh, it came down to, to me to do it, which was, uh, which was an interesting task, too. And, and it's one of those things as any long-range plan never ends. It has to be... You know, redeveloped. Uh, you have to every three to five years go back there, and and what we did to start with that, we went out and got a, and called in 45 brethren throughout the jurisdiction, and they met in 
you know, uh, a lodge in Des Moines, and uh, we kind of gave him a broad gold, and uh, uh, at, at that time, uh, very worshipful brother Al Jorgensen and very worshipful brother uh, Chuck McCrory were uh, put in charge of that, and, uh, and uh, I think Bill picked uh, Chuck and, and uh, Dick picked Al. And uh, I remember uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy Reed and, and I went up and, and told them what we wanted to do. We'd met with them before, but then went up and talked to those 45 brothers and, uh, and said, uh, you know, here's what you need to do. Where do we want to be five years from now? Where do we want to be for 10 years? And how do we go about getting there? And, uh, and uh, we said, that's your charge. Uh, and oh, by the way, we're leaving. And uh, Jimmy and I went out. We went over to some meeting that, that Bill was having, and uh, with some, I think maybe even been a youth group uh, in Wenatchee. And we took off and left uh, uh, Chuck and Al over there with uh, those 45 brothers. And they met, uh, I think it was three times, maybe four times. The, the final one was in Wenatchee, uh, where they they made a presentation and. Uh, and I'm sure that's uh, in the archives someplace in Grand Lodge, but uh, they came up with a good one. It was small, didn't have a lot of things in it, you know, probably, oh, maybe a dozen or two. Uh, but it, it, it met the needs of what, where we needed to go. And, uh, and it was fairly, you know, fairly effective. And, and uh, some of those things was getting, getting the lodges to do the same thing. And because uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, we sometimes think we, we look to the past for our direction, but uh, we look to the past for the guidance. Uh, you know, uh, we aren't doing things like we used to, and we aren't going to do things in the future. We've got we've to gotta develop a program that will meet uh, the present and future needs, uh, not the past needs. And uh, I, think, uh, I think that's a program that just, you know, is, is meets those needs and needs to be in there. So. So that was you know, that was the, the emphasis of that. What would you say the biggest challenges were of your term? Mm -hmm. Probably the same thing every grandmaster has uh, is is this this jurisdiction is so diverse. Uh, it's a it's a lot more diverse than uh, some jurisdictions. Some are real small. Uh, some like. Uh, Oh, some of your ones in the Southwest, they're, they're pretty well uh, made up of the same type of people and, and the geography and everything. And we have, you know, obviously the West side and the East side and the Central part and, and the North and, and the South. And, and it's just a diverse uh, uh, group of lodges. And there's no uh, one thing will, will work for all of them. So the, the communication and education, I guess, uh, are, are tough. And to meet the needs of those individual, individual lodges and, and get them to do, they have to do that. Uh, you know, uh, you have to have grandmasters that are willing to work for the benefit of the craft. Uh, it doesn't work the other way around. Uh, you have to do what the lodges want done and what the craft wants. Because if, if it isn't what they want done, nothing will get done. And there's nothing you can do. You think, uh, you, you think you're think you grandmaster and, and have, a, have a hammer, but uh, yeah, they just step aside and, and let you swing away, and, and you'll be gone, somebody else will come along. And, and so that's why I think with the long-range plan, you have to go back to lodges and say, what do you want to do? And, and it has to be sincerely, you know, uh, obtained from them. And that thing's hard to communicate, and it's, that's hard to do. Uh, education's always been a hard thing. Uh, I think it was District 32 that, that had near the perfect thing I, I'd ever seen, and, and uh, they've got their individual, uh, I think it's district education team, and they train once a month. They have a training session. And uh, it just it just works great. Uh, it's 
why District 32, or what is it now? District 3, I guess. Isn't it? They, they keep changing those things on those grandmasters, so that we don't know where we are, but uh, they still do, and, and it's still a premier district. And uh, it, it's, it's been proven if you go out and look, you know, what lodges are doing good? Well, they're probably from a district that works together. They have a long range plan as a district, and the lodges have a, have a, uh, a plan what they want to do. Uh, it's amazing what some lodges are doing. And it's amazing, down the road two blocks, you got a lodge that's really struggling. You know, what's what's the difference there? Well, if you look at it close, one of them has a design, they know where they want to go. And uh, and leadership, you know, that's a big thing. Uh, some people have it and some people don't. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, it's, it's education, communication, and... Uh, I, I still think it would be tough, but it'd be, it'd be, and it wouldn't be tough. 32 did it, and if, if 32 could do it, anybody could do it, is, is have a district uh, education team and uh, where you provide some training. And I think every district has two or three people in there that, that you could train uh, to be trainers. Some jurisdictions do it in a different way. They have a grand lecture, or assistant grand lecture, excuse me is a sister grand lecture in every district, or maybe every two districts. And they're responsible for setting up uh, training in that district. And, and it works. But I still think uh, you can probably do it within, you know, within, with the people within the lodge. And, uh, where they have assistant grand secretaries, uh, they may be appointed for four, five, six years. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a job equal to uh, the uh, grand lecture of, of the jurisdiction, uh, a lot of responsibility, uh, and uh, a lot of effect. So, so I think yeah, that's it's always is communication is the cause of all problems mostly, and and, uh, and education you have to have that, and and because we're so diverse, and and you know we have we have lodges, probably some places that are 7,500 miles apart. And it's hard to get, you know, hard to get them together, let alone try to get them together over a, a two or three district area. You know, you just can't do it. We know that. Uh, we can't get guys to visit each other. How are we going to get them to, to go that far? So I think we have to bring training home. Uh, I think we're, uh, we're losing lodges all the time. We'll get to the place where you could just about assign a quarter of the lodges or, or a fifth of the lodges to, to each elected officer and have every lodge visited by elected officer every year. Uh, and, and I don't think we want to necessarily go that way because uh, then we aren't going to have a lot of lodges. Uh, but I think if we don't do something for education and communication, uh, we're headed that way. I mean, uh, you know, doing the same thing over and over and expect different results is... Uh, uh, that's got a, that's got a name for itself, and uh, it just uh, just doesn't work. But but you know the the positive thing about that, you know, look at everything. Yeah, I can I can point to to some things we aren't doing. But you start going around this jurisdiction, and there's a lot of things that uh, that uh, we're doing that's really neat and really great. We got some lodges that have some programs that uh, have been around for a lot. Some of them don't cost a lot of money, and yet they're making an impact in the community. They're they're having members, and uh, and yet we're we're a little bit reluctant to look at those lodges and say, you know, what are they doing, and and uh, how come they're successful, okay. and then imitate them. Uh, I, I don't know why that is. Give me some examples. Oh, I think the books for bikes program. Uh, some places that's worked great, you know. Now it doesn't work great every place. Uh, we've got places where it's working, and they're giving away books, and, and they aren't getting a, a lot in it. Uh, over here, uh, we've got some lodges involved with uh, Tom's Turkey Drive. You know, uh, you get a lot of exposure for that, and and that's something that you know it doesn't do anything for us, you know, but it does give us some exposure, and and they see, it, you know. Uh, We've got, uh, uh, here we, we do the, uh, the uh, penny drive for, uh, oh, 
Boy, I'm blanking now. What is that? The uh, uh, Guild School. Guild School. Yeah. And, and in fact, we just Cheney does good. In that. Uh, where I just made a report the other day. At, uh, so you just like okay. repeat your last statement. Oh, okay. Uh, is we have a we have a lodge here in, in this district that's uh, run six of all the stations that, that pick up pennies for that, uh, and uh, that's in pounds, uh, and it's a small. One. I mean, there's there's probably six or seven people that that do that every year, and uh, so you know it, it's little things like that that. Uh, you start getting, uh, you start, people start seeing it. Uh, the Walk for Life, Cancer Cure, uh, people in, you know, there's lodges involved in that. Uh, there's some, over on the west side, uh, there's a lodge that's uh, primarily the uh, arts lodge. You know, they're, they're into arts and music, and, and they really support uh, some high schools and university programs over there. And, uh, you know, well, we'll do that. Well, we got a lot, you know. Uh, masonry was involved in, in arts and, and, and things like that, you know, uh, pretty heavy a long time ago. And, and so there's, there's all kinds of programs like that that, uh, that they do. Uh, and uh, I think we need to look at, at how we're approaching those things, too, and, and how we're allocating re resources. And, uh, how we help the lodges do that, and that's part of the communication. Uh, you know, that's that's the other thing um, we looked at at one time, and, and, and in my year is is listening to what the people are saying in the lodges. You know, what what can Grand Lodge do for you? Not what you can do to Grand Lodge, or, or vice versa. You know, uh, what can Grand Lodge do to help you accomplish what you want to accomplish? And, and we need to ask. Them. I, I think one of the biggest uh, controversies we had was the, the uh, electronic uh, degree work. You know, and, and everybody said, you know, that'll never fly, that'll never fly. And old Bill Wood said, yeah, I've been listening to the brother for five years. And, and they want that. And we see what will happen. Uh, same way uh, in my year, we, we put in the 1%. Uh, where we take 1% of all the funds we're managing and, and we pay back the Grand Lodge. I mean, there was there was talk of, hey, that's illegal, IRS will never let you do it. And I said, how come Grand Lodge of Oregon's been doing it for about 15, 20 years? And IRS hasn't said anything to them. Well, that kind of showed them. I mean, it's because they didn't want to do it. This year, I see there's a resolution to put it up to 2%. Uh, I guess we were really wrong back there, my year. I don't know, and, and that's not the question whether you're right or wrong. It's what did it do to the brethren, and, and it helped them keep the per capita down. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, you need to you need to listen. You need to listen to craft. Like I say, if if they don't want it, it's not going to happen. Uh, I don't care who you are or what you try. Uh, and I think uh, I think the grand master will, will have to say that. that uh, yeah, it happens. So. Anyway, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of where it is. Hey, Grace, what do we got? Somebody coming up reading the meter? Yeah, oh, oh. Oh. Memories of your term as mm. Grandmaster. Uh, well, <clears throat> I don't know. It's just, uh, what's my fondest memories of, of, my, of my term? Uh, and you have to look at that <laughs> clear back when I, you know, I started as, uh, I'd been grand order, I'd been grand lecturer, and, and then I came through in, in the year I, I ran for the South. Uh, and then once I was elected, you know, uh, all four of those, five of those years. Uh, four? Yeah, four of those years. Um, I think, number one, you got to say the, the brother and you met. Uh, and, and to just find out how big and great this is uh, as a fraternity, it's, uh, and you know, I, I was talking earlier about it, I did a lot of traveling, and uh, I used to think the neatest thing when I joined the, the fraternity was a lodge, 
and then I got associated with the district, you know, and, and boy, it just expands, you know, what it is. And then pretty soon I'm on a, I'm on a Grand Lodge committee, and, and you're meeting a bunch of different people, and, and uh, you're saying, whoa, you know, this thing, it just never ceases. And, uh, and then I ended up doing some, some traveling. We've been in <clears throat> every state west of Mississippi. And, uh, and a couple of them east uh, in a motorhome. And, and we've been to others, you know, and other Masonic activities. Uh, just, uh, they're, they're just, every time you take another step in another area, uh, and yet the, it's the sameness of it. Uh, those brothers in Louisiana, uh, you know, <coughs> went to a small little lodge down there, and, and uh, they didn't even know at the time I was a past grandmaster. I, I try not to let that out, and uh, it didn't make any difference. Uh, um, they, uh, about uh, oh, three months later, I guess, after I'd visited him, get this vanilla envelope. They'd made me an honorary uh -huh, member of that little lodge in Zawali, uh, Louisiana. But every one of those, I've been in, I think I've been in about seven, I've been in about 14 lodges in seven juris different jurisdictions just in since we've been traveling. There was a lot of other lodges and a lot of other jurisdictions when I went to... Uh, to uh, La Grand Lodge of Alaska because that's they came from us and and I think it's really important to, to maintain those just like we do with Oregon because we came from Oregon uh, Idaho because they they've been uh, identified with us uh, in fact I think they have more to do with us than sometimes we think if you go up to EWU Eastern Washington University on their Showalter Hall their main administration building there's two cornerstones because they built that building and put a cornerstone in it, and it burned down about eight years later. And so they rebuilt it and put another cornerstone. The first cornerstone has uh, uh, F and AM, and the second one has AF and AM. And, and nobody can tell me why. I even had uh, a, a great historian for Washington uh, Masonry, uh, very much really Coe Tug Morgan, do some research on it. I can't figure it out. So the closest one of those around is in Idaho, and uh, I think there, and, and yet uh, it wasn't done at the time uh, that should happen. So it's just a, it's a, it's an interesting uh, question there. So, uh, but uh, I think that the biggest thing outside the brethren, and that includes the brethren, we're, we're the brethren and the sisters. Uh, we had, because of where we lived, we spent a lot of time on the, on the west side, a lot of time in the Sonic Retirement Center, and to meet uh, those people and uh, spend day after day with them. And, uh, uh, <laughs> to the point, like Vita says, uh, you could never sneak in on them. I mean, we could, we could come back from northern, uh, northern part of the state, up I-5 someplace, and get back at 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, the next morning at breakfast, they'd say, oh, you got home a little late last night. I mean, uh, they were sitting up there watching you. And uh, uh, that's, you know, that's a, that's a sad thing to see go. But I think we're, I think we can meet uh, the, uh, the members' needs a little bit better. But th that was really a neat thing. Uh, uh, and there, there was, there's probably, you know, several dozen of us. It, it really had that opportunity, and, uh, and it was neat. So, I think that's one of the one of the neatest things I had. But, uh, but then to you know stand up in front of the Grand Lodge and, and uh, realize they you know they thought enough of you uh, to elect you to that office. Uh, that was something. Uh, I always said the uh, the value of an award. Is, is in direct proportion to uh, <clears throat> to uh, how much you value the institution that gives it to you. And um, that was probably the, the greatest award I could get was being elected grandmaster, no doubt. So. Does the office make the man or the man make the office? 
Hmm. Does the office make the man, or does the man make the office? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I think there's no. I think there's no two ways about that. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't explain to somebody that says, "Hey, I want to run." You know, can I? What they're getting involved in. Uh, uh, and, and the person that goes in there isn't the person that comes out. Uh, so, yeah, you, you take things into it, uh, but you get a lot more out of it. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's both, I think. It's got to be. It's, uh, like I said, you, your response, you know, they're... Uh, they're going to determine what you do to a large degree if, if you're smart enough to listen to them. And, and you'll be successful if you're smart enough to listen to them. And if you aren't, uh, if, you tr if you try to take the lead, uh, huh, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, you know, it just, you, you don't have the, the resources and, and the manpower to do it. You, you've got you've to decide what the craft want and... Uh, and then you've got to get the craft to help you get there. And uh, that's what moves the grand lines on. Bob, I have one more question, mm -hmm. and that is, uh, who is the greatest help to you as Grandmaster? Hmm. Boy, who's the greatest help to me as Grandmaster? Uh, it, it, it probably falls into a couple categories. Uh, When I, uh, in fact, the one that was 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 a big part of getting me to even think about running was uh, most merciful Tom Aders, was her brother Tom Aders, who was uh, grandmaster uh, a couple years before. Well, what was it? Four years before me, I guess it was. Yeah, uh, he had taught me. He was deputy over here in this district, and and. Uh, he trained me an awful lot, but then there was other past, in, in past grandmasters is one of the biggest things. Uh, there was Roy Foss and, and uh, uh, Harold Tucker, and uh, uh, the the other past ma past grandmasters from over here that, that were even training you, and, and they weren't even knowing what they were training you for, but uh, they were just providing help. And then I started meeting past grandmasters, other places, uh, Jim Van Nuys, uh, Bill Wood, Dick McCarty, uh, Carl, Carl Smith, all those guys that I was fortunate to be in. Started in Carl's line, and it was just, uh, he was a great trainer. And uh, I learned other things from Bill, other things from Dick, and, and I'm in the line now. Uh, but there were other people before I ever got elected, you know, they were training me. So, so, and sometimes it's just a, a, some brother out in the lodge that uh, never been grand anything, and yet you learn from him. Uh, what he wants, what he needs. Is, so there's, there's kind of the, just the people out there. you got to talk to people. And, uh, and then there's the, the past, uh, you know, past appointed uh, deputies and things like that that, that teach you a lot. Uh, I remember looking when I first came in uh, out here, I looked at some of those deputies and I said, you know, how do they do that? And um, uh, they helped me get to where I could do that when it was time for to do it. So, yeah, it was, uh, and uh, like I said, and a lot of past grand, had a, had a great uh, grand secretaries. Or, uh, uh, John uh, Kelleher was uh, was a great guy. Uh, in fact, he's probably the. I uh, had my first assignment when uh, Tom Adert wanted me to uh, to work on that project for him of, of the one day conferral, which was another project. You know, would never fly, uh, and uh, it got voted in, and uh, George Jurgish. Uh, Appointed Tom to, to implement it, and uh, you got to implement it Tom's year. 
because John and or George and Tom worked together. And the uh, first guy I called was uh, Tom and said, what do you got me into? And, and the second one, he says, uh, he said, get a hold of John Kelleher. He'll help you. And uh, I said, okay, what do I do here, John? And, and he provided some, some real good help there. And uh, then uh, followed him. The other one was uh, our present Grand Secretary, uh, uh, Dave Owen, who, uh, who was really good. Came in. We, he and I were, were greenies at the same time, which was uh, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting situation. It was his first year and, and uh, my first year as a Grand Master, and my last as Grand Master, and, and he's still doing it. So. Uh, uh, he was. He's been a great help. So you just you just find it all over. There's some uh, there's some good uh, good brethren all over to give you a hand. But you got to talk to them. You got to see what they want. Uh, and that's something I think a lot of people don't realize. And and you can't you can't be as selective as who you ask. Uh, it's interesting with that one day conferral. Uh, I had nine men on it, or nine brethren on that on that. Uh, committee. Three of them were in favor of it, three of them didn't care, and three of them were opposed to it. And we threw those nine brethren together and, uh, and came out for a good initial program. You know, it's, it's, it needs to be modified and tweaked a little bit. But uh, we learned that the first time we put on down here in, in the lodge in, in Spokane, the main lodge. And, and that, uh, uh, but to, that's that's kind of the idea you have to go by. You know, don't always ask your friends because uh, you don't always get the answer you want. You know, ask three that are for it, and three that are against it, and three that don't care, and uh, you get some good answers. So that's that's how I think you work. It. Anything you'd like to add, Bob? Oh boy, yeah, probably a lot. Uh, probably a lot I've forgotten. Uh, I uh, I. Like I say, uh, I think there's a great future for it, for the fraternity. I, uh, even with all the struggles we're going through, uh, we're doing some great things. We're doing things in some cases better than we were my year, and, and some things better than 10 years before that. Uh, there's some places we slip, but then I, I think you have to look at the, the society. It's changed a lot. We, uh, we don't have the time, you know, and, and that's a fact. Uh, you, you really have to struggle to get time, so we have to learn how to adapt our, uh, our needs with, with society, so to speak. So I guess that's, uh, that's the only other thing I had to ask, Ed. You know. So. Mm -hmm. It's been an honor. Hey, appreciate it. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. What do you got here? They're going to throw you a sidearm card. Oh, okay. Hey, we'll take it. Um, tell me about the uh, the Van Z stomp. Oh, oh. Well, you know, once again, I, I got to... <coughs> we got to look to other places. The Van Z stomp. <coughs> well, let me start this all over. Because uh, I know you can edit it at least, but... Uh, the Grand Z, Van Z Stomp. Uh, I have to go back once again to uh, to the uh, getting ideas from other people. And and when I started going to these state conventions for the uh, youth groups, you know they just they have a, a electricity about it. You know, I mean, I don't know how those youth groups do it. I've been involved in church groups and and uh, youth groups and scout groups and, and Special Olympics and, and I know how much work it is and, and they go, uh, they really do a, a yeoman's job. Well, there was all this electricity about them. I got to looking around and, and they're, they're energetic. They're out there. They're raising heck, essentially. Uh, they, are, they are so pumped up for one convention for six months that they keep going and then they're getting pumped up for the next one. And uh, I saw this in the one that uh, our uh, our cameraman Reese was involved in. 
You know, I mean, they'd, just, they'd be pumped year-round. And uh, I said, you know, I said, we gotta, we got to incorporate that. So I said, let's, let's get up and move and shake a little bit, you know. And so uh, I got this stomp, uh, a clap and a stomp, you know. And, and uh, uh, it was, I forget now, masonry, masonry, masonry. And, and, and uh, we, uh, yeah, we stomped three times and, and, and clapped three times. And, uh, and how, how does it go again? Uh, what was it? We, we, we did the clap, masonry, masonry, masonry. I don't know, we did, yeah, masonry, 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 and then, then we, uh, did just masonry, 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 and then we stomped our, yeah, stomp, yeah, stomped your feet three times. Well, first time we did it, I forget where it was, but we were upstairs in the lodge, and the ladies were having their program afterwards. And man, they come up there after, after after the meeting was over, wondering what was going on up here, you know. But I got the guys up, you know. I got them up out of their seat, and I got them moving around, and and uh, and, and I said, you know, brother, that's what we need to do out in our lodges, you know. Uh, not necessarily to stomp, although that wouldn't hurt, but we need to get that type of, of energy going out there. Uh, we need to be excited about Mason. Uh, we don't need to sit around behind doors and, and uh, uh, say what a wonderful uh, what a wonderful institution we were in the past. But you know, what can we do now? Uh, let's let's start moving. And uh, one of the ways we need to do is just get up and start getting energized. So that became the the, the Van Z stomp, and, and uh, I've had that pull on me a couple of places, and I've had it with. Uh, with the youth group, uh, they pull on me, and, and uh, I think it's neat that uh, that uh, we can reach back to our youth and say, hey, maybe that's kind of what we ought to do. Uh, that's another area we haven't explored an awful lot. They're, and besides not only being a great resource, they're they're just a, a synergy type thing that we can give. So, yep, that was a that was a Van Z stomp. So. Uh, Hopefully that'll come back someday, someplace, and in some other form. So uh, anyway, yeah, it was it was fun. Wonderful. Thank you, Bob. Okay, appreciate it.